Hello everyone and welcome back to another Movie Nights Movie Review. Today we're going to be talking about Maestro, directed by Bradley Cooper. It also stars Bradley Cooper and Carrie Mulligan, as well as many others. And uh, it is the film about Leonard Bernstein, the famous composer, conductor. I'll read the brief synopsis from IMDb for you. This love story chronicles the lifelong relationship of conductor-composer Leonard Bernstein and actress Felicia Montalgray Cohen Bernstein. And that is exactly what the film is. It is a love story. And uh, I'll go ahead and say right off the bat, this film is exceptional. It isn't perfect, and I'll kind of get into that in a minute, but I do kind of want to highlight the things I love about the film first. Uh, first off is the performances. Both Bradley Cooper and Carrie Mulligan fucking bring it in this movie. They are constantly acting all over the room with each other. Each one elevates the other's performance, and both of them are devastating, funny, heartwarming. It's it's two master classes being put on in front of you. And staying to Bradley Cooper for a second, he's the director of this film. He also directed A Star is Born. A Star is Born in its own right is a great film, but I think with this movie you see how he's grown and become even stronger as a director. Not only down to bringing out the performances, but the way everything is shot, the way everything looks is gorgeous, which leads me to the cinematography. Amazing. Uh, the film is in 4-3 and there are portions of it that are shot in black and white as well as color and it does hop out of the 4-3 for a couple sequences mostly at the bookend but it's mostly 4-3 and I thought it fit the film quite nicely I think the 4-3 aspect ratio really helped tell the story it never felt like a distraction at any point and the black and white cinematography was gorgeous you could tell they even did the old school lighting differences with the black and white photography versus the color photography and each decade that the film takes place in the filmmaking almost reflects it of that time period with some exceptions uh, there's a section of the movie that takes place in the 40s and it looks and feels exactly like a 1940s movie. And as a matter of fact, the first act of this movie is the best part of this movie. Not that the second and third act are bad, but there's this infectious magic of the first act that really reels you into this story, to this love story. And it is mostly done through the filmmaking of making it seem like an old school movie. And, but your eyes, ears, and soul are glued to the screen for every second of it. And as their relationship gets rocky, the film takes a turn and you kind of lose that infectiousness of the movie, but it still works for the story. Where I'll get into the negatives of the film are, while this is a clear love story from beginning to end, uh, in the middle section of the film, in the second act, when it's kind of diving deep into these two as people and their relationship almost falling apart, the movie was less interesting when they weren't together. And I know that that's part of the story, and the story on paper works before you're watching, but there was such high energy magic in the beginning that it slowly fades throughout the movie. And while, the, while this is clearly a means to an end of the story, you can't help but think about the fact that, man, like, I was all in this movie and now it's kind of slowly taking me out of it. And albeit it's done intentionally, however, you can't deny the feeling of a movie having your full attention and mind and body, especially for a movie that's going to be released on Netflix or people at home, and then it's slowly kind of taking you out of it as it goes. Now, the film does pick up again in its third act, which is exceptional. Uh, it does kind of dip a little bit in the middle there. Not just momentum-wise, but pacing as well. The pacing does feel a little bit uneven throughout the second act of the movie. And while they do fit a lot in its just over two-hour runtime, it does still feel a little bit overstuffed. And while you feel the negatives that I'm saying, it in no way affects the overall movie. It is phenomenal and encapsulates not only a great story, but a specific feeling, you know, music is obviously very tied into this film with it being about Leonard Bernstein. And the way the film uses music, the way the film talks about music and art in general, uh, is very thought-provoking. And it's something that you kind of sit with after the movie's over. Uh, the movie also has phenomenal production design, costumes, and makeup. The makeup is... The makeup work is crazy. Obviously, they do some makeup on Bradley Cooper to make him look more like Leonard Bernstein. And there are close-ups that... I, as someone who kind of works in indie film, I'm looking for like the the flaws, you know, just kind of be like, oh, where, where's, where's his real face meet his fake face? And you can't tell. It is perfectly constructed makeup work on not just him, but everyone in the movie. Uh, the movie does make a choice to bookend the film with specific scenes at a specific time in one of the characters' lives. I'm trying to be vague. And it really worked. I, I get worried when films try to kind of bookend things in a certain way. 
and uh, the way that this film did it I thought worked quite well. Ultimately, while the pacing and the overall momentum of the film does dip in the second act and it is felt, the movie recovers in the third act, has a brilliant first act, and emotion is so emotionally resonant with powerhouse, world-class performances and a story that'll make you kind of sit and think to yourself after. It's a phenomenal movie. It's one of the best movies of the year. It comes to Netflix on December 20th. Don't miss it. I highly, highly recommend Maestro. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once you've seen the film and you're watching this, what did you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.